I've wasted a lot of time trying to locate records when I have large lists. Have you? If you have as well, then today is going to be a great training because I'm going to show you how to locate any record in a matter of seconds simply by typing it in, even when we have large lists of names. It's going to be a great training, especially for VBA basic. So let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me. I've got a really cool training. We're going to build a very simple user list, and I'm going to show you how you can simply start typing in a name and have those matching records show up within a user form. If you're new to VBA, this is going to be a great training because we're going to go step by step. This template is absolutely free. All you need to do is click the link down below. Whether you're on my website, just look for the download button, or if you're on YouTube, just look for the download link below, and I'll make sure to get this work workbook right to you. If you do like these trainings, there are so many great ways to support us. My mentor, Daniel Strong, has an incredible 30-hour VBA course, the ultimate VBA course. I'll make that available for you because he's really helped me out, and so that's a great course. I've also got 350 of my best templates available for you. There's no reason to recreate my templates. You can have them, you can use them, and they're completely open and unlocked. And I'll make that link available down below. All right, so we're going to get started. We're going to create a little bit of a user form. And that user form is going to have a very simple search feature. And I'm going to show you how to do it. So the idea is this. What I want to do is I want to build in a search inside a user form. I want to put some criteria here for, let's say, a filter. And then we're going to have those results come here. And those results we're going to put in the user form. So the first thing we're going to do is just build that user form. And to do that, we're going to need to get into VBA for that. So to get into VBA, you're going to probably want to go through the Developers tab. You can also use the shortcut Alt F11. If you don't see the Developers tab here, of course, you can right click any menu. Just click the Customize ribbon and then make sure the Developers tab is selected. Once inside the Developers tab, just click Visual Basic. And what that's going to do is going to open up the Visual Basic and it may look something like this. If for some reason you don't see the VBA project or if it's hidden, all you need to do is just click here, the Project Explorer, and it will be displayed. What we're going to be doing now is creating a brand new user form. So I'm going to click Insert and then User Form. And we'll just make it a little bit larger because we're dealing with a large list. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it here. We don't need it very wide. Now, I do want to change some of the properties of this user form. So I'm going to click Properties, or I'm going to use the F4 shortcut. And that's going to show up the properties. It may be a different place on your screen. I'll just give this a little bit of a different name. So I'm going to call this Customer Form. And once inside the Customer Form, we can also give it a bit of a caption. So we'll just put in Search Customers. So that's fine. Search customer. So that's good for the user form. I might as well give it a background, although it's absolutely not needed. We can change the background. I'm just going to browse for a different and I'll use this blue one here. It's going to be a JPEG image and it'll work. So once inside the form, I really want to enter just a few components. So what I want to do is display the toolbox here, which is going to give us some options of controls to enter. The first thing what I want to do is I'll just give it a title, although it's not necessary in this one. And I'm going to make this title. I'm going to make it transparent and I want it centered here. So centered and we're just going to give this a caption here we don't need a label and this is going to be called search customer so now once we have that we can increase the font of that although once again it's not necessary but it kind of gives a good look to the field we can click on the font here and then we can increase this to something about 12 and then bold once we do i'd like to add another label so the label is going to be for our search field so i'm just going to select here and once again i'm going to make this transparent oops let's go with transparent and i'm going to write justify that and i'm going to enter a caption just going to call it search customer so search customer so once we have this i also want to change the font size so you guys can see it and no need to have glasses for when you're watching my training i'll make things a little bit bigger let's go with 12 so search customer and we'll just make it nice and big now we're going to write justify that i want to enter a search field so now i'm going to click it on and i'm going to use a text box field once again, I'm going to put that right about here, nice and big. So we're going to be able to search for the customer here. Now, when we search for the customer, I don't need a border on this. 
and I want to be able to basically enter whatever we want. So once again, I'll go back into the font here and I'm going to also make this big 11 and click OK. We also need a selection margin. I can turn that off to false. So the idea is whatever the user types in here, I want it to appear. Now we need a list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter this list box here. So this list box, we're going to populate with all the customer names. And once the user searches for it, we will then be able to populate it. We want this list to display like all of the customers if the user has not selected anything but as they start to type I want to have this list populated so this list populated as far as the column we're gonna have one column and I want to show the column heads meaning I want to show customer name so that I'm gonna set that as true it's gonna provide a header for that all right so now what we want to do is I want to create a macro I don't want to use this original list I want to create what's called an advanced filter based on some filter that's gonna be here so if the user starts typing I want that filter to appear here and I want the results of that list to appear here now that's gonna happen with an advanced filter so we need to create that and program that advanced filter. So we're going to go back into our module here. We might as well give this a name. We're going to call this customer list. And I'm going to give this one a name. We're going to call this a search customer. So we'll just call it search customer and lower. So that's fine. That way we can identify them easier. I'm going to insert a module now where we can write our advanced filter code. So I'm going to select on insert and module here. Now I'm probably going to write two macros, one to display the form and one to run the search. So what we can do is write sub show form. So I just want to show the form. So let's just start it out with doing that customer form dot show very good so i want to run this macro when the user selects a button so to do that i'm just going to add a button right in here i'm going to insert just about any shape will do just fine and we'll select this shape and i'm just going to write it right here and we're just going to write in search customers so now once we have that we want to assign a macro to that and we only have one macro it's called show form the one that we've created so when we click that button, it's going to show that form. And that's exactly what we want so far. Very good. So let's go back into the code here. It's one more adjustment I want to make, which is the font here. And I want to set that font something to 10 or 11. That should be okay. So now back inside our module, we're going to write that advanced filter. So I'm going to drop this down and let's close this one out. I don't need the properties here. So I'm going to write a new subroutine. Sub, we're going to call this search customer and when we search that customer we want to do a few things i need to determine the last row if we're going to run a filter i need to find the last row of column d so that last row we're going to put inside a variable so we're going to dimension the last row as a long it's a whole number so then what we're going to do is we're going to focus on sheet one so i'm going to type in with sheet one our focus is sheet one i'm going to put the period temporarily to make sure that the intellisense comes up if i have the wrong sheet name and i put a period nothing will show up that ensures that i get the right name just a way to check we're going to do first determine what that last row is so i'm going to type in last row is equal to dot range so it's based on a range and i'm going to use column d so we're going to put the quotation marks d and then a large row make sure that's large enough that covers all of your data dot end excel up dot row so that's going to tell us the last row and so message box let's just make sure that we have it message box last row so when we run this macro it's going to display the last row and it's going to tell us the last row is 51. so we're going to look down here and we're going to make sure that yes it is indeed 51 so that is correct now that we know the last row we can run our advanced filter however we do need to run one check if for some reason we had no data if the last row was less than two we could not run a filter so we're going to put a check in that if the last row is less than two then exit sub meaning there's nothing we can do because there is no data assuming that we do have data we're going to run an advanced filter based on range now what is the range that we're going to do we're going to start out with the header row which is d1 all the way through d and the last row we're running an advanced filter so i'm going to type in advanced filter now i want to copy this to a range i'm going to copy it to range eight so we're going to use copy and we're going to set the criteria so the criteria range colon equals dot range now where's that criteria it's going to be an f2 to f3 so we're going to place it there f2 through f3 and don't worry in our other code we'll actually place whatever the customer enters in f3 so that'll come in just a moment so that's what we're going to copy it to although there's no criteria right now then we want to copy 
to range. Now, what is the range that we want to copy it to? Dot range and simply just H2. We want to make sure that the headers are the same in D1, in F2, and in H2, the customers must be the same. So H2, and then what we want to do is unique colon equals true so we're going to set just unique records now what we're going to do is we're just going to run this filter just like this and we see that we have basically a duplicate list of names if i were to put in a type of filter let's say we wanted to show only names that started with j or that contained the word j we could do that or j o let's do that asterisk j o and then another asterisk now if we have that filter and i run that same macro one more time only names that contain j o will be here so that can be very helpful knowing that now that we know that what i would like to do is i'd like to create a named range but a named range only for the results and a dynamic named range that's going to grow or shrink based on the data so to do that we're going to go into the formulas name manager and we're going to create just that notice that we have two an extract and a criteria these get created automatically when we run an advanced filter through vba so those got created by vba and if we were to delete them they did just get created again when we run the macro again which is okay and they should be there so i'm going to click on new and i'm just going to call this customer list or customer i'm going to do customer results let's do that it's a little bit more descriptive customer results because they are the results of an advanced filter and we're going to make it dynamic so we're going to use equals and i want to use the offset so offset and we're going to start it out in the head a row i like this because it doesn't create any errors so it's called custom results and we're going to go one row down that means i want to offset it one row down so we're starting at basically row three so one row down no columns over so we're going to skip that and put a comma and we need to determine how many rows so we're going to use count a for that and to determine that once again i'm going to use the header row we'll subtract one and then we're just going to change three to a very large row so it encompasses all possible data i'm going to subtract one because i do want to not include the header and then i want just a single column this is a single column so we're going to put a one here i'm going to use the tab key i'm going to tab to the okay then i'm going to use the shift tab and i'm going to tab back I want to make sure the dancing ads around my encapsulated data. Perfect. I'm just going to copy this because I'm going to use it in a minute. So I'm going to click OK. All right. So now we have custom results inside. We've got those results, and that's exactly what I want. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the VBA. I'm going to go back into the customer form, and I'm going to select our customer list. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select on the properties. And I'm going to scroll down here, and I'm going to look for row source. And I'm just going to paste that name in there. As soon as I do that, it's going to populate with those results and that's exactly what we want very good so that now we understand that our results are populated here so as soon as we are going to be making a change we're going to show you how those results so before we do that what i want to do is i want to make sure that when we run this show form i want to clear any searches that might be there so to do that i'm going to use sheet one dot range and our search is going to be an f3 so f3 dot clear contents great so we've cleared that and what i'd also like to do is when i actually run this macro once we clear the contents i want to run and populate this form so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy this macro right here and i want to run this macro right before i show the form because i want that customer list box to be populated with all of the customers so now when i select on here search customers you see that it runs the macro all the customers are here so it's populated do you see how that happened because we cleared the filter here the results are going to be every single customer and perfect so now that we have that what i want to do is i want to start working on the search when i start to type in names here i want this automatically to be updated we've written most of the macros already so let's go ahead and update that so to do that all we need to do is go into the customer form there's two ways we can double click here or if we're not in there what we can do is we can right click and view the code it's going to get us to the same place now assuming that this wasn't here already I want to look up search customer which is already here and i want to run something as soon as a user makes any type of a change so it's perfect that's exactly what we want now what do we want to do i want to take whatever value they've typed in and i want to put it directly in f3 but i also want to surround it by the wild card and that means containing anything containing jo or anything so to do that what we're going to do is i'm going to type in sheet one dot range f3 dot value equals and then we're going to use the quotation marks and the asterisk quotation marks and whatever they've typed in now what have they've typed in is called the search 
customer.value. So it's the value of that field that they've typed in. And I also want another asterisk. So now we've surrounded whatever they've done. And now what we're going to do is we're going to run this macro. It's not going to necessarily update just yet. We're going to need to do one more thing. So I'm going to right click, view the code again. I'm going to paste this in here and I'm going to save it. So let's take a look at this now. And it probably won't work just yet. So I'm going to type in JO and look at it works right away. And that's really, really cool. So notice it's working quite. So if I type in S M I T, perfect. So notice two smithers. So one other thing that you might want to do, although it works quite well. So here dough, right? And so you see how Michael and Michelle, as soon as we add the E, it changes. So you see how quickly that works, even with a large list works, even when we're clearing it out. Now, the only other thing that you might want to do is update the row source, although we didn't have to in this case. And what do I mean by that? Sometimes if your data is not refreshing in the list, you might want to automatically refresh it. So here is called the customer results. So inside our module, what you might want to do is add a little bit of a code and we definitely need to wrap this on error. So on error, resume next. And the reason we want to do this and on error, go to zero. If there's no data, it could create an error. So what I want to do now is I want to go into customer form dot customer list dot row source equals, and then we're going to paste this in. That's going to ensure that the row source is automatically updated. But for some reason, if there's no values, if we've returned nothing, it would create an error. So that's why we've wrapped it on error, resume next. While it seems to work just fine, even without this, this is kind of an extra level to ensurety. So we're gonna save the work that we've done. We're gonna try one more time. We're gonna select in the customers and we start typing in SAM. So it's working very good. U, uh, E, nothing there. Perfect. So this has been a really cool training. I showed you how you can quickly locate any records simply by typing it in. It's a great request. So I wanted to thank our friend, uh, Ironique. Thank you, Ironique, who said, can you add, I already took care of the first item here. He said, can you add how to apply in the user form search function for the customer names if the list is very long? Customer list box, just by filtering through the list by typing in the field, customer name. So it shortens the number of customer names to choose from. Perfect, great idea. We already took care of his first idea a few weeks ago. So thank you very much, Ironique, for your excellent suggestion. I'm glad to help that. If you do wanna grab this workbook, you can just go ahead and click the link below. And if you want additional training, I create comprehensive application development each and every Tuesday. And with that, I also create an updated file and an updated training every Tuesday, and that's for our Patreon members. And if you're not on our Patreon, there's a whole lot going on. I've got over 170 updates and updated trainings exclusively for Patreon members. As soon as you join that, you're gonna get full access to all the benefits, including all of those updated trainings, the updated workbooks, a lot of bonuses, very great rewards, including PDF codebooks, and that means detailed code books when we have larger code for our comprehensive workbooks you're going to get a pdf guide so you can see all the code very clearly written out and color coded that's all part of our patreon so make sure you get in thank you so much don't forget to smash the like button and don't forget to comment below i'd love to hear your feedback ideas thanks so much and we'll see you next week